there will be one hundred anniversary of the birth of Alexander Pitek, uh, very well known and famous Slovak and also representative of former Czechoslovakia. I would like to thank you that uh, you decided to join us in this small ceremony here to commemorate the uh, legacy of uh, Alexander Pitek. Thank you. and Slovakia. Uh, welcome to our joint event by which we commemorate the day of struggle for freedom and democracy and the International Students' Day. Let me also thank those who some minutes ago joined Pavel and me in the replay ceremony in the Alexander Dubček Park. I will not speak about Alexander Dubček for too, for too long today. He strongly believed in social justice, reached the top of the Communist Party of Czechoslovakia, tried to reform the system only in order to see his ideas being crushed by military force. Later, he was sent to Ankara as the Czechoslovak ambassador. So this building, uh, the residence, as well as the other one, uh, a smaller building uphill, uh, including the garden was the place where he was working and living in for a couple of months in 1970. You may see more at the exhibition we are opening next week. So going on in the time, in the 1970s and 1980s, uh, there were some protests uh, taking place against the regime uh, in former Czechoslovakia and dissident movements emerged. I can mention Charter uh, 77, Christian dissidents and Christian movements, or dissidents who formed out of environmental activists. In the late 1980s, the Soviet system already differed from uh, the one of 1960s. The leader was Gorbachev, who did not want to interfere in development in socialist countries like his predecessor. Changes were taking place in Poland, Hungary, East Germany. A sign of the coming change in Czechoslovakia was also uh, so-called candlelight demonstration in Bratislava in 1988. On November 17, 1989, there was the 50th anniversary of the Nazi intervention against students of Prague universities. A demonstration that took place in Prague uh, turned later into a massive protest by the whole country against the regime. The protest spread throughout the country. The communist regime fell in a few weeks. Alexander Dubček was appointed as Speaker of Federal Parliament and Mr. Václav Havel was uh, elected as President of the country. A few months ago, in 1990, the first three elections in Czechoslovakia took place after more than 40 years. 
years of transformation and what we call return to Europe followed. We have become also members of NATO, also thanks to the support of Turkey. Looking back on what happened in 1989 seems simple. It was dangerous, but simple, because the world seemed simpler and easier to us. But the question is how to express our freedom and democracy today. Some doubt, also in Slovakia, that freedom and democracy could be the best and relevant value and principle for future. Responsibility and respect for others must go with freedom. Freedom is is not based on law. The freedom that is not based on laws and moral values is a destructive force. We must ask whether our actions are moral, whether they help others or reflect responsibility and duty. History teaches that freedom and democracy are not once for all, but they must be fought for under, uh, unsteadily, or that this struggle must be fought for every generation. I believe that the younger generation in Slovakia, is Czech Republic too, uh, can do. Thank you very much for your time.